shape. Well, let's pause um, for a second. Okay. So you're 19. You're in your home. Were you in your home with your family or were you living alone or with roommates? I lived with, I lived with my family, but no one was home. Got it. Got it. So this is where, this is the place where you grew up. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you were 19. Um, you explain, you know, one of the questions I was going to ask you is if you recalled your state of mind before it happened, you know, when it occurred to you that it was happening during it and then right after. And I think you started to get into that a little bit. Um, you were asleep. Yeah. So you're in your home, a place that you feel safe in and you're asleep. So tell me if you can recall, like, you just had a normal night in your home before this all occurred, right? Oh yeah, yeah, I'd actually been out with some friends and went and watched a movie. A guy had just started dating and his friends and had a great night. And yeah, and that was that was what I woke up to. Mm -hmm. You did not know this person, correct? I did. Oh, so this was someone you knew. Yeah, and so in that moment, I had no idea who it was. Um, but in the process of the police trying to find him, he, he actually attacked another woman about a week or two later and she recognized him, like she saw part of his face. And when they said his name, I said, oh, I know him. And, um, and I don't, I'm not comfortable getting into the, those details because I, it's personal, it involves a lot more people than just me, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Um, and and it's ongoing. And so, uh, but yes, you know, most victims know they're the perpetrator. And, and though I didn't in the moment, um, yes, it was someone who knew me and um, there are at least six known victims at this point. Do you recall the moment when it ceased and then you got to say, what do I do next? What did you do when it ended so you could kind of try to course correct. Cause I'm just, like you said, you're like, all of these things are happening in my brain. And I'm like, yeah. try that, that doesn't work. Believe that that's no longer true for me. So as you're processing this, right? You get to the point where it's like not an active situation. What do you do when it is no longer active? What, what, what course of action did you take? Oh my God, my brain was going a million miles a minute. Um, and he, he had left and said, he like, put me in a room and just said, don't leave. If you leave, if you try to leave, I'll kill you. And so I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll spend the rest of my life in this room. Um, but, you know, as I laid there, I was just going through my mind. What's my escape plan? How long should I wait? What am I going to do? And so I laid there and just planned, okay, I'm going to put those clothes on. I'm going to run outside. And I think there's a lady in the neighborhood who's a stay at home mom. So I'm going to go to her house and because everyone else is probably at work. Um, so I, and it felt like an eternity. I, I couldn't tell you time was moving in such a strange way. Um, and so that's what I did. I very quietly got dressed, ran as fast as I could out of my house, went to the neighbor who I'll never forget, like the look on her face of seeing me just, I hadn't seen myself yet. And I was, I looked really scary, um, you know? And so running to her, are you safe? Where's your daughter? I need to call 911 and uh, yeah. I wanna sit for a minute, you okay? Yeah. Okay. So after you connected with this neighbor and she took care of you, um, what was your first contact with law enforcement like? So the police showed up very quickly. Um, I called my parents, you know, everyone was there and Again, it's a blur. Like it was so traumatic. It was such a crisis situation. Um, I got my first glimpse of myself in the mirror and just was in complete shock of what I saw. I mean, just everything about it was, was terrifying. And uh, so uh, quite a few agencies, like day one, were there for me. And they all had different levels of knowing how to deal with victims, like trauma-informed care that definitely wasn't across the board, yet they were all there to do their job and do it to the best of their ability. And so um, the police department was absolutely incredible and they were working day and night on this case, you know, and as 
you know, they were able to link it back to previous cases that were unsolved. And um, so they really, like, I remember my mom, like, taking them gifts late at night because they, they were working 24 seven to try to find him and solve this. And um, how did that make you feel? Amazing. I mean, yeah. I felt very cared for. I felt like 100% they were doing their job. 